Hi, Anthony from Contractors Debt Recovery back with uh, this final episode in uh, this second series of videos. So we've kept uh, the best till last. Uh, I don't know what award this one's gonna win, but we're very hopeful it'll win an award that hasn't even been uh, invented yet. I'll be in a category of my own. Uh, nevertheless, okay, so what we're gonna talk about uh, today is this phenomenon where you're doing all this work and uh, uh, you haven't got a contract, all right? Now, let's walk, walk through this. This line se is the separator, so let's look at letter of intent. So sometimes on bigger jobs, your client will say, here's a letter of intent, start work, but subject to a contract. You then start work on your letter of intent, you never get a contract. Uh, but the letter of intent says everything's subject to a contract, there's a payment dispute, and then your client says, by the way, here's the contract. Everyone, here's the contract, and here are all the clauses you're in breach of, and that's why I'm not paying you. You've never received the contract, you've seen it, but it hasn't been sent to you, and now there's an argument, is the agreement the letter of intent, or is the agreement the contract? All right? Now, uh, that's your fault, because you didn't insist on getting the contract back. Okay, getting the contract, executing a contract, signing it. Alternately, you'll provide a quote to your client, and they say, great, start work, uh, subject to a contract. Same problem. Or there's no contract, in which case contract is your quote, but I'm talking about scenarios here where there is meant to be a signed contract. You put in a tender response, fantastic, start work, or fantastic, here's a letter of intent, start work. Same problem. Maybe you go a step further. Maybe you're working now for two weeks, and finally, two weeks or three months, if you're really silly, Finally, you get a contract and they say, sign here, come in and sign it. You haven't reviewed it, which is a whole other talk, but let's say you've reviewed it. You sign the contract and you send it to them under the pretense that they will co-sign it and send it back to you, but they never do. So now you've signed a contract that you don't even have. Now there's a payment dispute. You come to someone like me, I'm going, where's the contract? Let's understand the terms here haven't got it, don't have it. You're going in blind into the dispute because you just kept working. Now that is your fault and that's very silly and you must insist on it. And in fact, in my books, I don't care what the industry norms are, I just don't start. The contract is what binds you to your customer. If there's no contract, there's no reason for you to be there. I had an earth moving contractor ring me up and go, mate, I'm concerned, I've been on site for three days, I've done $20,000 worth of work. And we, I went through the discussion and I said, did you quote? No, just agreed, ballpark, oral. There was no tender response, no letter of intent. Have they issued you anything in writing? No, have you agreed to anything in writing? No. Do you have a contract? They said there is one, <coughs> but they haven't got it to me yet. So then I waited and then I asked this question. I said, Michael, what is there in existence in this universe that requires you to be on that site right now doing work? Absolutely nothing, nothing. There was no agreement, there's nothing on paper, there's absolutely no reason for him to be there doing any work. So uh, he said, there's nothing. So I said, well, pick up your stuff and get out of there, which is what he did. And you wouldn't believe it, what a surprise, a contract turned up four hours later. Would you, be I can't believe it. Of course I can believe it. All right, that's what you've got to be doing. All right, get the contract back. I would even avoid the whole thing and say, I'm not starting work until I have a signed contract. We're coming into your offices, you're coming to mine. We're signing this off, we sign off two copies, you keep one copy, I keep another. That's it, and I insist on that. And if you insist and make life hard, you'll get it. But be under no illusion that this is a deliberate strategy from clients. They're quite deliberately keeping the contract from you. They quite deliberately don't return it to you. They quite deliberately send you a blank contract so that they have plausible deniability well, we never signed it. We sent it to you, but we never signed it, etc. Co-signed contracts that you have a copy of. That's the golden goose that you want to aim for. A signed contract, both people have signed, both have dated, and I've got my copy, and I've got that copy before I've done work. Don't be doing work two, three weeks, three months into work, and you haven't got a contract. I've had people come to me nine months into a, a, a job with no contract. That is absurd. You shouldn't be doing it. It's totally your fault. Just put your foot down and get that contract. And if your client ums and ahs, just stop work. 
because you can all, I can already see trouble down the road and so can you. All right? So the last message in this series is if there is a contract on the horizon or there is an intention that this is going to happen, make sure you have your signed copy and make sure, at least in my books, that you're not starting any significant work until you've got it because your clients have got it. They're just trying to get you going, get you deep enough in, in amount of money you're owed uh, so that they can then say, well, we're not giving you the contract and then you're stuffed. All right, if you've got any queries or questions, the numbers at the bottom of the screen, give us a call. Other than that, I hope to see you in a third video series. Other than that, have a broader, broader look around our website, go to the web store. There's lots of good information, good booklets, good stuff you can buy to help your business run better. And I will see you next time. Cheerio.